Um, I'm Angela Ardolino, and I started my cannabis journey about four, five years ago when I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, and I was prescribed Humira, and I'm no, not interested in taking um, a prescription medication that leads to lymphoma and all kinds of horrible side effects, so I started researching where I could find something natural, and probably like a lot of you, you found wonderful cannabis uh, medicine. I went to California, where is where I started, and uh, it completely changed my life. Not only did it get rid of my joint pain and inflammation, but my anxiety and stress levels went down. How long ago was that, Angela? About five years ago. Five years ago? Okay. Um, it sh it made such an impact on me at the time I had a parenting magazine, a regional parenting magazine, and I immediately wanted to know more. That's when I got involved with a group called Canamoms, where I was watching children who would go into complete epileptic seizures, and their moms would kindly, uh, calmly shake a bottle, tincture up, take it, put it under the child's lip, and I would watch the child go from complete seizure to 20 seconds later, having a conversation with me. So this, to me, was, it was inhumane to keep this medicine from humans. So I literally sold my magazine and threw myself into the medical cannabis industry um, because I knew we needed to get this medicine out to everyone. And one of the first things I did was I was enrolled in the inaugural class at the University of Vermont who had the first uh, medical cannabis program, the therapeutic use, the study in the therapeutic use of biology of medical cannabis. I took that, um, which blew my mind even more. A very difficult program, but wonderful. Learned everything that you could possibly learn about the history, the therapeutic uses, the biology, why it works. And of course, that's where I learned about the endocannabinoid system, and that's where I learned that animals have the endocannabinoid system. So I also have a rescue farm where I rescue farm animals and dogs for the past 12 years. I also where, have a, where is that, Angela? In uh, Florida, in Florida. Luke, Florida, about 45 minutes hour away from here. And I have a grooming and boarding um, business shop, retail, all pets. So when I learned this, I took my two favorite things, which is cannabis and animals, and I brought them together. So four years ago, I couldn't find anything specifically for animals. Um, so I would use human products, but often they would either be too strong, or they'd be too high on the THC side, or they have flavoring or uh, sweeteners, and a lot of those things are not only toxic to dogs, but some of them can even kill dogs, like xylitol will kill dogs. So I started formulating and making my own. So since I couldn't find one, I have my own line of products, but- what, what is your line called, Angela? It's called CBD Dog Health. Okay, thank you. Um, and what we did a little different is that I took other uh, which you appreciate. I took other essential oils and combined them in the tinctures. And because I own a shop, I could watch people walk in, try to read the labels and figure them out, and they couldn't. So I divided them into the calming one, the one that's joint pain, the one for the dog that's really sick. And then I combined other essential oils that help not only, because as most of you may know, uh, the cannabis plant has a lot of the same terpenes and flavonoids that other plants have, like lavender and rosemary and frankincense and turmeric. All of those have wonderful um, medicinal properties, and they actually help cannabis medicine work even better. So we took some of those plants and essential oils and included them with our tinctures. And we also have salves. Um, salves, topicals work really well, especially on dogs, because dogs have three layers of skin and they have CB1 and CB2 receptors in every single layer of skin. So you got a bump, a lump, an irritation, you literally can put a full spectrum salve on it and the next day you will see it start dying or shrinking or going away. So that's who I am, I'm very passionate about it. and. Let's dig in then. Yeah, I can answer everything from carrying it in your business to manufacturing to branding and marketing to how it works. So I'm an open book, whatever you want to know. I'm an advocate. The more people that know about this, the better. All right, let's 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 start with the medicinal side of it, mm -hmm. and then we'll go into the business uh, element here to help uh, 
maybe but how many people here are starting um, a pet business or anything in that area okay how many have an existing okay so let's put all of those hands up together and okay so so we definitely want to get the business component of it and for the rest of you here um you want to share with us a little bit you know who, you know why are you here we have a really small room let's work together on this uh are you looking for interest to go into this uh your own personal how many people are here for a personal reason with their animals does anybody have a shop that's like uh selling cbd products and want to introduce pet products in okay good so that probably covers the whole room yep so we're gonna we're gonna start with the medical first we're gonna go into the business element of starting the business and getting moving and then of course maybe a little bit into distributorships and do you white label your products so absolutely not okay all right it's her brand all right so let's start so so when you first began the journey and you started looking into the animals you started the formulations uh, were you working with an herbalist or anything or how, how did that go you know, can you just kind of give us the very uh, beginning of that journey you bet I know everything about um, medical cannabis so I needed to know now how do I make a tincture how do I get it absorbed quickly what do I mix it with um, my essential oils, I work with an essential oils expert. He actually manufactured Aveda's products for the first like 20 years and then stopped because he didn't like some of the non-natural products they were putting in there. So I worked very closely with him and his daughter happens to be a holistic vet. So the three of us developed um, everything, all of the pictures, what they would do, what we could have in them. Are they partners in your business then? Nope, we just, uh, just hired them as a consultant. And so so let's, like, let's go into some of that. So there are obviously very specific remedies for specific ailments for an animal, just like a human. Yep. Um, so if we go into the skin area, let's start there. Skin health for a dog, whether it be tumors or psoriasis or whatever you know, avoiding the cones on the poor little dog's heads. So what sort of things do you give for that? And how quickly does it heal compared to traditional uh, methods? Well, I don't know if anybody who's in the pet industry, nobody here, does anybody here have a grooming or shop or boarding or anything like that? Okay, so what you do? So you'll know when you have a shop like that, you're getting people coming in nonstop with pets that have problems. They come into your shop more often than they go see their vet. So it's as simple as paying attention and going, oh, I noticed this little bump, lump. You don't even have to know what it's called. It gets rid of all of them. Every single bump and lump I have ever seen on a dog, every irritation, I have put my salve on and it immediately disappears. I wish I could show you pictures, but it- um, oh, That's good. And if you have mama, a website that they'll be able to yeah, can access and absolutely. kind of look at some of this. But like a, what is like your website, a, Angela? At cbddoghealth.com. And I'll give you CBD another one. Health.com. Another website. Um, actually, my website is angelaartolino.com. angelaartolino.com slash pet CBD research is where all the current research is housed to for animal research. The good thing that you brought up is that we know it's slow in the human research part, but guess what? Most human research is done on animals. Mm -hmm. So when they go, well, does it work on, well, it's already been proven on animals and seizures, but let's say cancer. Guess what they tested on? Rats, beagles. Right, well, rats are that. such a, uh, when they go through the government studies, mm -hmm. um, the, we, there's extensive research on cannabis and rats. Right. And, um, I'm publishing a book coming soon, which is called Exploit the Magic of Cannabis. And that is, I'm a certified master herbalist. So that area um, is completely, um, it's, it's still very slow. The money is not coming in quickly enough. It's the private studies that are going. Um, so what you're doing, I, I think, is this path is going like this, and you've got this kind of shortcut. And legally, you can do that, which is, which is beautiful. So let's um let's what's, think it's the what's next. beautiful about it is that pets don't need more than that 0.3% THC. So it works amazingly on mm -hmm. them. So my product is legal because we're under the farm bill and we don't need more than 0.3% THC. Now when it changes, will I have tinctures and oils? I already do, but I don't sell them that have higher THC. Absolutely. Because right. some dogs we know it kills cancer. 
So if I've got a dog filled with cancer, I'm going to give them more THC because A, it's going to get rid of their pain and it's going to get rid of the cancer. Right, and, and specifically, it stops the um, acetose, it causes acid, induces cell death, mm -hmm. and then the antigenesis, when it, it, it spreads, it, it stops that spread. So, so not only is it keeping it from spreading, and it's stopping the tumor from growing, but it also kills the tumor. So the three elements are happening simultaneously in the cancer research that's being done. Now, granted, it hasn't gone into our more extensive human system, and that's going to take some time. Um, but are you using, can I ask you this? Mm -hmm. um, you, you can only use 0.3% THC. Now, some of the studies are showing that the, the true cancer death is on, on a full spectrum. Right. Um, I only use full spectrum. Okay. okay. And everyone and here knows what full spectrum that. means and the difference. Okay, good. Because I never know. I, I go to pet. Go ahead and explain pet, it for those. Yeah, I go to pet events and talk about cannabis. I go to cannabis events and talk about pets. So I'm always like, I never know the knowledge. But you want to stick with full spectrum even with pets and yourself. Um, when you're getting into a broad spectrum or an isolate product, you're just pulling out part of the medicine and you need all of them to work together. They all work together. CBD balances THC. THC is the killer of cancer, but of course it's also the one that gives you the psychoactive um, feeling. As same thing with your dog. My full, I have an 1100 milligram full spectrum product that only has 0.3% THC. I only extract from flowers. Like my dog products are better than a lot of human products are because I don't cut any corners on what we're making. We only extract from the flower CO2 extraction. And my 1100 milligram will actually give a dog static ataxia, which is supposed to be only caused by an overdose of THC. Now when I say overdose means too much THC. They don't die, it's not toxic, there's no um, harm, it doesn't hurt them but they do look high. And that happens with a full spectrum product with 0.3% THC. You just need that little bit of THC in there to help it work. But when you have a dog with something on their skin and you can, like people made fun of me when I came out with the salve. Like, Who the hell is gonna buy a $40 salve? Well, if it was a human product, it would be an $80 salve, first of all. Or much more. Or much more. But because they have receptors in both the skin, you literally can see it the next day. You can watch it die. It looks like, uh, if it's a papilloma, it actually looks like you've taken a lighter and burned it. It turns black and dies in front of your face and falls off. Tumors that have been there for, what, what uh, Olivia's was there for 10 topical? years. What, what other essential elements uh, we, are you using besides uh, it's, so the KC? And it's 150 and milligrams of full spectrum <laughs> and peppermint essential oil and uh, coconut oil. Co coconut is your carrier oil. Coconut okay. is my carrier oil. Excellent. And our coconut oil, um, we've partnered with, you know, what are they, third family generation uh, coconut farmers um, from uh, the Philippines. They're in the pet industry. They make a, pure, a very pure product with all of the fatty acids and essential fats that you want in your coconut oil. So right. even what we put in and who we partner with, we make sure it's the best. Coconut is a fully saturated fat. In fact, it's exactly. the only oil that has lauric acid in it, exactly. which is only found in human breast milk. So it's a healing in itself. Where you also find CBD. The first time you get CBD is in your mother's breast milk. So we can't bottle that. But imagine <laughs> that yeah. if you <laughs> if you didn't get your if you weren't breastfed or let's say a puppy or a kitten or an animal missed out on being breastfed for the right amount of time, they already have a deficiency in their endocannabinoid system. So that means a puppy or a child may need a, a full spectrum CBD program that will help them. Right. Good. Okay. So that that's the topical. And let's go to the next um, area. Let's do three areas, and then we'll start getting some questions in. We'll talk about business and get some questions in. Sound good? So let's do a second one, and let's talk about um, let's talk about cancer um, in the animals, because as you know, many of us have lost pets to cancer. Um, it's it's huge, obviously, and it seems to be growing. Maybe it's with the foods. We're not 100 percent sure um, what's triggered that. Okay. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and talk about what you give those animals. And is it different with cats, dogs, bunnies? I mean, besides the dosing is, is what you're, you're giving the animals different. Go ahead. So dosing is a lot like it is with humans. 
every animal is different, every ailment is different. So I could have two animals that are the same size, have the same ailment, but if one's a senior and one's a young dog, the senior is going to need more because he has more deficiencies in his endocannabinoid system. So dosing is, if it's a calm, you know, it's a situation where you're trying to get him calm, we always recommend putting, uh, you know, doing a tincture and doing it right onto the gum line so it absorbs quickly into the bloodstream. Um, so right, right. sublingually. Right, and you, you watch for 20 minutes. If the dog is not calm, you give them another dose. We all here know that you cannot overdose or kill anybody with medical cannabis. We all know that, right? So I don't have to clarify that. There is no, it's been studied. I don't know if everyone knows this, but in 1970, they did a study for humans, clinical research, to see how much THC it would take to kill a human being. They used rats, beagles, and chimpanzees. Not only were they unable to kill any of the animals, I think two rats died from uh, passing out and throwing up, whatever that's called, I forgot. And the no chimpanzees, no beagles died, the chimpanzees' livers ended up metabolizing the THC and bringing them back to normal. So you cannot kill an animal or any a mammal with medical cannabis. So in the pet industry, that's the number one thing people are scared of because just like in the human industry, right. we've been scared, been scared off of THC. And the animal industry, it's even worse. What's the cancer results? What are you seeing with the dog? Gone. And cats? Getting rid of it. My one of my. And what are you using? Just, uh, my just very first full spectrum, or, or what do you use always the use a full spectrum. Right. And are you adding anything to that? Uh, in not that, not is... to my tinctures. If someone were to come to me with, well, I just did. I just sent a um, a syringe over to someone in Nova Scotia. Okay. But um, yes, a dog that's have, super you're sick. You're able to mail that. You're no, I had to totally hide it okay. and wrap it in Christmas <laughs> paper and everything else. Okay, but great. I mean, I've been doing that forever. You know, they're like, "How are you going to get it to me?" I'm like, "I'll get it to you." I've been freaking driving stuff from California or flying from California to Florida for five years now. Lock me up. I don't Angela, care. What's the I'm result? Like, what, are you, what are you seeing? <laughs> Cancer gone. Uh, Two years gone. Of the time. One of my first cases was a doodle. I have a, a good relationship with a lot of vets around um, where I live where they've done everything. They tell the, the, the pet parent, we can't do anything else, but here's this crazy lady who does cannabis medicine, if you want to call her. Good thing is, is that I get the animal and I have nothing to lose. The vet's given up, everyone's given up, so now I can pump them full of medical cannabis and heal them and send them back out. So it was a doodle, was my first one, just... Well, the good thing about dogs um, is that every if there's something wrong with dogs, it pops out in their skin. It doesn't happen like that to us. So the moment something pops out in their skin, and it usually happens when they're about 8, 9, 10 years old, when they become seniors, and they have to change their diet, usually just like us, when we become a certain age and we can no longer drink the certain things or have milk anymore or weed or gluten or all those things because their bodies are going, uh-uh, no more. Same thing happens with dogs. Kibble is the worst, and most of us are feeding our dogs a kibble diet. Vaccinations are the worst. These toxic flea medicines that they put on us, these heartworms that they put on the dogs, all of this is what's causing the problems and the cancer. It so this is an, an immune system is, is becoming more deficient. So how do you treat an, an autoimmune disorder in a dog? Let's use that for our third um, example here. So remember, mine, I had a, an autoimmune. I'm not even sure if I still have RA because I don't have the symptoms that I was having before because I take cannabis every single day. But um, I forgot what you asked me. Let's, we'll talk about autoimmune deficiency in so an So for animal. instance, we, uh, just a story we had right now, the dog, it was a multi poo. She's one of my favorite stories because it was, it shocked me. Her, tum her tumor fell off in two weeks and it was 10 years old. And it fell off in two years, two weeks. And she took a picture of it the entire time. She did the 1100 uh, milligram tincture and the salve right on it. She, the dog also has Cushing. 
so she's healing that and has realized that she no longer has to wake up in the middle of the night to take the dog out anymore and it's not thirsty anymore so it's already reversing the cushing autoimmune diseases there's a reason why they're in there and we can reverse them how, how do you do that, Angel? What do you use? By bringing, uh, by bringing your endocannabinoid system back into balance. So a full spectrum. Yeah, do you have Do you have on your shelves, do you have things that are specifically for each of these? Yeah. Okay, so how many products do you have, Angela? We have three salves, three tinctures, and um, treats, two different types of treats, and we do it in horse, cat, and dog. And what do you what do you call them? Do you have names for your yep. your products? Because we want to go into uh, helping them. To calm, our tinctures are calm, ease, and heal. Calm, ease, and heal. Our okay. uh, salves are remedy, which is our tumor killer. Soothe, which is more irritations, bumps, um, and then nourish for uh, rough paws, noses. Common bulldogs, their noses actually crumble and fall apart from them licking it. Oh. So watching all these things in my shop and rescue is how I developed e each of it. Awesome. Good, good. But one of my favorite things to do is to tell you how to sell it because... Right. My, let's, get, let's get into that. Do you want to? We yeah, have my, a lot of time here. So a lot of you had talked about in the beginning that you have businesses existing or that you're starting a business um, in this area. So are you? how many people are looking for specific products to put on their shelves? Okay. Good. And you're looking for products that work, obviously, for repeat sales, and you want to help these animals. Um, and how many people are here just to get an idea of what's out there to begin a business? You have never started that business yet. Okay, good. All right. So, so Angela, I'm going to let you tell them a little bit about um, how you started your business, your storefront, um, kind of briefly, and then we'll get some questions coming in and we can go to that next level, okay? Um, those of you that have, for you that have a pet shop, um, I, my shop is in Lutz, Florida. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's a tiny little shop and I sell $2,000 a week of CBD products. I can barely keep them on my own shelf. Um, we actually run out, I'll walk into my shop and go, why are there no comms? And they're like, we ran out. I'm like, well, then why didn't you tell me? But, um, People want it and they need it. And if they already understand that the medicine works for themselves, oh, also let me back up. My shop is next door to a vape shop and a CBD dispensary. <laughs> That's convenient. Isn't that lovely? They didn't exist there when my shop first opened, but they're there now. So it's really funny because there's CBD banners when you turn into my thing, but you know, I, I'm still selling. It's the all in one shop. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, what made it easy is that the branding and labeling is very easy for them to read. An another thing is that when you have a shop, if you're able to sample, and this goes on the human side also. I just came from uh, CBD shops in New York City that are, I mean, jammed packed with people and they literally have a bar. What's your issue? Give them a sample. And if it's a good tincture, they will feel it immediately. So I love giving it to an anxious dog. I know what an anxious dog looks like. Most of us know what an anxious dog looks like. They're, you know, crazy. <laughs> they look a lot like an anxious person, being able to dose them right there. Or can I put a little bit of the salve on this bump I've noticed your dog has? And literally, they come back and go, what was this stuff? Um, if it was a grooming situation, we would... We would have so people. how how did you start this now? We we, we know we, we gathered how you put the people together, your team together, you got things going, you developed the product, you opened your store, right? Mm -hmm. And and there was no one around you at that time. How did you how did you start getting customers? How did you start just initially? So I already had I already had the shop. How did I get them to C B D? That's right. Well the as I said before, I owned a magazine. So I have more content about uh, how it works, why it works, everything you hear me, I've got a blog on it. So when people retail our stuff, we give them all that information. So one of the first things I did was write an article for my local magazine, just the neighborhood magazine. And I literally, that's when I first sold out immediately. I had senior citizens coming in with the magazine all folded up, walking in going, I need this, you know, type of thing. And it works. So they come in again and again and again. 
And if I were a CBD shop and they came in as a dog customer, I would be able to convert them to a human customer because half of them end up taking the dog stuff anyway. Well, will it work for me? <laughs> yes, it'll yeah. work for you. Are, are so there I have others more humans that are doing what you're doing. Are there are there other are there other stores out there doing what you're doing? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So so with your products, are you um are, do you have the capacity to scale to a larger level to to get your products out? to uh, some of these new stores and so you do have a yeah, you're at scale we are um a cons we wanted to be a consumer brand but as you most of you know that are in the business is we can't advertise so we decided to partner with small shops for instance right now walmart has invited me to put my salves on their e-commerce and i haven't and the reason i haven't is because i have found my niche and my niche is the holistic homeopath herbalist niche. If I go on Walmart, I'll be kicked out of that club. So um, I'm always about sticking with the good people, the real people doing a thing over making a lot of money. Before I even launched my product, I got offered to be bought out. Because remember, okay. we've got huge companies but that are just you, waiting. You do have enough to supply oh, yeah. nationwide. Like if you wanted okay. to be a distributor of we your are product. A distributor. Okay, good. Oh well, You're we only distribute. We only are with distributors that distribute all natural and holistic products. Right, but you so distribute you to private, product. private Absolutely. stores. Right, so this is You're not. You're never going to find my product in PetSmart. Oh, I guess if someone else buys me for. I mean, I'm for sale for ten million dollars. If anybody's interested. So if we have it. Then they can have it at PetSmart. But for right now, I would never white label my product. We are a very strong brand. We also like to support, so you get infographics, social media, videos. Uh, I have a video, I'm Rodney Habibs, who is like the biggest pet influencer in the world. I'm his cannabis person. So things like that is where I have found my niche and stayed in it. I know everything about the human side of it, but my gosh, what a crazy side it, it is. It's nuts. I can't, I couldn't deal with it. And when I found out that pets have the same system, I'm like, that's where I'm going. <laughs> I'm going how there. In, how about in the e-commerce space? So the e-commerce space. Are you comfortable case, in that? Are you absolutely. able to get into that? Yeah. yeah. So e-commerce is a little bit more difficult because of finding a, a credit card processor. And you didn't hear this from me, but Square is doing CBD now, if, I, if everybody doesn't know that. You can also easily, we just did this, set up a Shopify store, use Square as the credit card processor, and then you can sell them on there. Um, credit. People like Square and Shopify are sticking with brands that are full spectrum, that have the CUA, the Certificate of Analysis. We have that on every one of our products. I do it before it gets bottled, I do it after it's bottled, and I do it when I receive it. So I do three COAs on every batch. My batch numbers are etched in the bottom of the bottles. We have a, a QR code on all of our labels, so people can actually scan them right there on their phone, match the batch, see exactly what's in it, because that's the only way we can self-regulate ourselves Good. Um, to make sure and prove, and that should go for every any human product. Don't believe what's on the label. Get and that COA. We have about 10 minutes left, so I'd like to take a few questions. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, what, what do we have out here? Some questions? I think you're doing using 1100, did you say? Yeah, four milligrams per serving? Yeah, yeah that's not gonna do anything. Uh, I don't even, this is, and of course, this is what I was trained. So I came out of the University of Vermont and knew that I was not going to make a tincture that was less than 500 milligrams um, if I wanted to, to make, have an effect. So does that make me priced a little bit higher? Also because I'm a full spectrum? Yes. Are there products out there that are $19.95, $29, $39, and claim they're whatever? Sure. But if you, horses, horses per serving, I would be at least at 30 to 50. 30 to 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams is what kills cancer in the latest um, 
research on dogs. So dogs have like 10 times more receptors than we do, but horses don't. So they actually may need more need than more. dogs do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and the carrier oil, and absolutely getting it up on their lips. So a lot of times I'll do my paste with a horse. Do you, do you put it under the, the tongue? So I, we, we put it up in the, um, the this part of the tongue? Right, okay. so that it kind of dissolves up there. Right, okay. So, yeah. Good. And the reason that we have, does the same medicine work on all the animals? Yes. Can all of us take the same medicine? Absolutely. Except for that the humans usually have other products in it that they can't have. It's just a matter of finding what dose works for whatever ailment you're dealing with. Age depends on it, all those things. And the reason that I had to have a dog, a cat, and a horse tincture is because dog people won't buy something with a cat on it, and cat people won't buy something with a dog on it. So, All right, well, let's, um, the two of you could probably connect after this is over and talk a little bit more for there. And you have a question back Thank there. You. No, you don't have to. It actually will go down the hair shaft and soak in. I do like to spread the hair and get it down into onto the tumor, but you don't have to. I have just because it's so much easier for me to uh, photo and video it shrinking and going away. And I must remind you, when you're getting rid of um, a mast cell or any other type of tumor, it's disgusting. <laughs> it literally it turns black and peels Well, no, away. not that. Those, those are the papillomas that turn black. The regular ones actually explode, and it's disgusting. Um, one dog, the first dog that it exploded, she rolled on her back and popped it. And I didn't know it. And when, I was like, what is she rolling on? And she, she literally had like a tennis ball on her back. And she had a, um, another one here, giant one here on her chest that I got all the way down to this. So she popped it, came back, and I went to look at it. It was completely gone. It was just like an ulcer, like an open ulcer. So I cleaned it up, and the next day, hair was growing out of it. That's so, beautiful. I mean, I'm constantly going, oh. That's the a, we have one now. We don't have a lot of time yeah. left. Yeah. Um, um, now, if, if, what about if the, the tumors are under the skin? That, that the it goes through the, the skin. skin. Okay. Yep, it goes through the skin. Right here. Hi. Um, real curious, how has the response been from the vet community? You talked about how you have some relationships with vets and so forth, and my concern is that there would be pushback. There is. Um, yeah, because you're a threat to their business. So, um, you know, what's, you know, have you been able, to, what, A, what's their response been? And B, have, have you been able to nurture those relationships? Absolutely. So I have about 10 vets that openly recommend and use my product. Most of them are all holistic vets. Um, so they believe the medicine. They've learned about the medicine. Um, I go to the annual uh, holistic vet conference where this year the keynote was by Dr. Gary Richter. So if you do need a vet, someone to say, yes, the, here's a vet, holistic vet that been using the medicine um, for 20 years. Uh, Dr. Karen Becker, which is one of the most famous vets, uses it, but she has not come out and talked about it yet. Um, some are scared of losing their licenses because they don't know better. Um, California, they passed a bill where vets can openly talk about it, so that's where you're going to find most of the vets that are online. Dr. Gary Richter, I told you, he has a whole presentation. He's wonderful. I actually gave them a standing ovation because I've been at so many conferences where they've given out the wrong information. It's only full spectrum that works. Only okay. full spectrum. We have a question right here in front. Going off, um, talk about that. Uh, I, got, I got the question from vets about liver, elevated liver right. function. Is that in combination if they're trying to use traditional medicine and then the CBD causes this problem? Or very good, very good question. Okay. So this elevated liver um, situation is because there the few clinical researches that have been done, the only side effect is elevated liver. Dr. Gary Richter at, at that uh, Holistic Vet Conference said this is not anything to be worried about. Uh, two of those, if I believe, I'm trying to do this from memory, two of those researchers, they were researchers, they were still on the other medications, which that caused the elevated liver. But he said, compared to any prescription drug or anything else, that it is not a concern. 
But can this use, is can what, you use uh, milk, thistle, dandelion root to help to heal that nothing, afterwards, right? The only thing that has been found is um, anesthesia, which still the vets, the holistic vet says, you don't need shows, should we stop doing CBD if we think they're going to be put under anesthesia? They say no. So it's not a big enough threat. Um, major pain medications, maybe, but that doesn't make any sense either because it gets rid of pain. So if it makes a um, painkiller less effective, it doesn't matter because right. the CBD is doing. But so far, not a single holistic vet who is in the cannabis space has any, he, they, I have how many, two or three of them quoting that this is the best medicine that they have ever used. And if you ever. think about this in terms of what, what the ailment is happening, this animal is going to die. He has elevated liver function. As a result, the liver has to metabolize all of this medicine to get it to the body. And so it taxes the liver temporarily. The liver can recover on its own, but it can also be used with herbs like milk thistle, dandelion root that will help to, to help it rebuild and increase the, the, the liver mass cells to, to heal. What their livers are dealing with is all the prescription cells. drugs that they have to, uh, they're all synthetic materials. So they have to, their livers have to work on that. Um, so when people bring up elevated anything, liver, anything you put in, the liver has to kibble, metabolize it, right? You know, the, the vaccinations, everything has to. Yeah. Um, so I always, it, I understand why people are asking because yeah. that's what the pharmaceutical industry is going to push now. Right. I think we have time for one more question uh, right here. Hi, what is the blend that you recommend for epileptic dog? Um, how old? Mm, she's like three years so she's three years and she's having um seizures mm -hmm. uh, i i would do probably like 10 milligrams of a full spectrum what, does day. her weight have anything to do with that weight has nothing to do with okay. it um i other for, terpenes like mint or something that should we should include in that mix for her if you have a if it's a true full spectrum product it already has the terpenes in it that you need what you're going to do is um You'll give her at least 10 milligrams a day. Uh, I would split it up, microdose it, split it into two. And basically, you're going to give it to her until she no longer has seizures. So one of my stories is I had a um, chihuahua, a 17-year-old chihuahua was having grand mal seizures, where I thought she was going to die. She was another rescue. She was going to be put down. The vet gave, it, gave her to us, and we completely healed her. But it took... Uh, 100 milligrams a day to prevent any seizures from happening. If I so when I figured out how much it took, because of course immediately I started giving it to her, and then it would go down to only two, and then only one, and then none happened. And it was so much medicine, I was like, okay, let me see if I can pull it back. The moment I pulled it back, she'd have one. So you have to give it to them and then watch. If you give it to her. You give her the one dropper and that works, that's all you need. And it may change later. It also builds up in their system, imagining that it's fixing things. So you may have to give a whole bunch at first and then you can taper off as you fix the, 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 the deficiencies in her endocannabinoid system. Thank you. But it has to do with every dog, every person is different. They can't overdose, so just keep giving it to her until they stop, and it will stop them. That's already been proven. That link I gave you, the CBD research, there's one research study after another. It stops. It stops it in everyone. Kids, dogs, everyone. And I'm sure we probably have a lot more questions, so um, would you mind talking with some people out in the hallway? So um, she'll share her information uh, with If you have any other questions, if you have questions about starting a business and in the business area, you can talk with me afterwards, and Angela will... Um, of course, uh, work on supplying you as well. So thank you all. Thank you so much.